Chris Rice from College Racing says that they are going to shock the world with their signing for the number 31 NASCAR. <clears throat> Chris Rice was a guest on Door Bumper Clear this week, and he was great. Go listen to the episode, ignore Brett, all the other things that go along with DBC, but it was actually a pretty good episode, and he dropped some hints here and there, but he did say that the driver that they signed for the number 31 car to replace Justin Haley in 2024 will shock the world. And now listen, unless this is like Max Verstappen, Lewis Hamilton, Scott Dixon, Carl Edwards, or Chase Elliott, you're probably not shocking the world, or we live in an entirely different world because I don't think their signing is going to be that exciting. And the question now is, who could they possibly have signed? I think there's a couple of names that make a little bit of sense, and let's walk through them real quick. Carson Hosvar's name came up on the episode, and the main question was, where do you guys think Carson's going to race at next season? And the prevailing consensus is the fact that he's going to replace Ty Dillon uh, at Spire in the number 77 car because he had a really good run there. He's a close relationship with Spire, and jumping over the Xfinity series might just make more sense since the truck races more like the cup car. You can kind of just make that hop. Maybe not the best decision, but it's something that Spire apparently is looking at. When asked about Carson Hosvar, and if he could end up at Colleg, Chris Rice said, never can tell. And to me, that means that that could possibly be a place that Carson Hosvar lands next year. He's obviously making a cup start this weekend, his second cup series start for Legacy Motor Club in the number 42 car. Uh, uh, it has nothing to do with what his 2024 plans are. I'm just throwing that out there as information. But could he end up in the 31? Maybe. Uh, he doesn't have a budget behind him, and everything we hear is that uh, Colleg wants a driver with a budget uh, to pay for that ride. Austin Hill seemed like he was going to be that guy, and then apparently bailed on them two weeks ago, to the surprise of some people over at Colleg, uh, to remain at RCR. And now, you know, maybe Carson does end up there. Personally, I don't think that's where he's going to end up. I still think he's going to spire, but it was an interesting comment from Chris Rice. So if it's not Carson Hosovar, who else is out there that we could possibly uh, be looking at? Chandler Smith is not a name that shocks the world. He's already in-house at Cog. He brings a little bit of a budget. He has an Xfinity win already this year, and they talk about him, specifically Brett Griffin, uh, like he's a future Cup Series champion. That's a pretty hefty goal to put on somebody, but we can all have goals. So maybe they hire he and that neckbeard of his to drive that number 31 car next year. I still don't think that's where he's going to end up. I think he just remains in Xfinity for another year in that 16 car and then maybe moves up to Cup and replaces AJ Allmendinger in 2025 in the 16 uh, Cup Series car. But he is a name that's out there. His parents do tend to like to put him into uh, rides, so maybe. Maybe that's a place that they can go. Another name that I hear getting floated around a lot is Noah Gragson. I've had two people now slide into my DMs and say that he's had contact with Colleg. It makes sense, right, in a, in a little bit of a way. He, he does have a relationship with Cog. He did run select races last year for them in the Cup Series before moving up full-time this year at Legacy Motor Club and then obviously getting dumped or separating, parting ways. He asked for his release, which was just a nice way to put uh, that. You know, it is a place that he could possibly land. He has a small bit of sponsorship money, assuming that sponsorship sticks with him. It's not a ton of money, but it is something. Uh, like I said, they have a previous relationship. He would need to be reinstated because he is currently suspended by NASCAR. I don't think that's a shock the world signing either. I think that's a pretty mid signing, but it's something that could happen and maybe they do end up signing him. I don't actually know, but I would imagine Noah ends up in the Xfinity series more than the Cup series. Another name that keeps getting tossed around is Justin Allgaier. And I don't think that Justin Allgaier and his sponsor, Brandt, this is the main reason why he's getting tossed around because he has a pretty big time sponsor tied to him and Brandt, I don't think they're leaving a winning situation at JRM in the Xfinity series to move over to a mid-tier cup team where they likely don't have a chance to win outside of maybe a super speedway, possibly a road course. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think Brandt would like to make that move either. They've already done this mid-tier cup series program uh, together back of the mid-tier even when they were at H. Scott. Uh, Motorsports, and I just don't think that that's something that's going to happen, but it is a name that keeps getting tossed around. Another name people just literally will not let go away is Matt DiBenedetto, and he announced on Wednesday that he's leaving Rackley War at the end of the year, and he's open to possibilities across all three series. To me, that means he doesn't have anything lined up. I, I can't imagine Colleg taking, uh, you know, a flyer on him and putting him into a cup car. He was mid with the Wood Brothers, in that car, he burned his bridges with Penske and Ford, so you know he's not going over to that side. I just don't see Colleg doing it. Again, he doesn't bring a budget either. We know what he can do. Like, he's the Mendoza line. He's 
below Eric Almirola in a sense, and I always put Eric Almirola as the Mendoza line. So I don't think Matt D's going to that car. It's a name that keeps getting tossed around. If that's the shock the world announcement that they're bringing Matt D in, buddy, we like I said, we live in different worlds. A shock the world announcement is a Carl Edwards. If you can convince Carl Edwards to come out of retirement, get out of Missouri, and join college racing, that's a huge signing. And Chris Rice even admitted on the on DBC this week that they were close to signing Kyle Busch, but they weren't ready to sign Kyle Busch. And it's better that he ended up at RCR, or an organization that was ready to win races consistently. Carl going to college just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It's a shock the world signing for sure. I would, I, we would all be absolutely floored. Outside of that, there's nobody else that I can really think of that would, quote, shock the world. Eric Almirola, he's probably leaving Stuart Haas Racing. Maybe he takes his Smithfield money over there. Again, not really that shocking to just put another mid-driver into your car. Uh, other than that, like, unless you're stealing Chase Elliott or Kyle Larson away, you know, bringing back Danica Patrick, like, I have no idea what a shock the world announcement is. But I still stand by the fact that I think it'll probably end up being like a Chandler Smith or somebody along those lines. Imagine just bringing Grant Infinger up. Like, we know GMS is closing, so that could possibly be in play there. But, yeah, Colling says that they're going to shock the world. I don't know who that is. Shane Van Gisbergen, possibly. Uh, but we know that he's close to signing that development deal with Trackhouse, which hasn't actually been signed yet. So there is a possibility that maybe this is in play. Who who actually knows, right? But, yeah, the Call of 31 car and the mystery around it continues to go on. I'm excited to see who this Shock the World announcement is because I'm tired of saying Shock the World. But it should come in the next couple of weeks, right? Chris Rice said that they... They've signed somebody, right? So um, it would be hilarious if they were like bringing over Marco Andretti or like a Scott Dixon or something from IndyCar where you're just like, what the heck? Didn't see that one coming. So let me know who you think it is in the comments. I would love to hear what everybody else's thoughts on this are um, because I don't think any of us have a really good lead on it right now. And something that Jordan Bianchi said on the Teardown podcast this past week, he, was here, he, he doesn't know. I don't think he knows because he said that he's heard some weird names for the 31 car, which, I again, would love to know who these weird names are. Like, what constitutes a weird name? I don't know. But let me know in the comments. Uh, like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram, Twitter, and threads at BreakHardBlog.